Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and this is Taylor Welding. Today we're going to be working with Austin. He reached out to me in the comments uh, and he said he lived close and was wanting some help. And that's what I want to do is help you guys get going on your pipe welding journey. Now, Austin has been welding for a while and he's just starting pipe welding. So I'm going to walk him through putting the bead in. He's already pretty good at it. And we're going to talk about some of the mistakes he makes and what we can make better and, and try to help you guys go through that. He's already got his land on here. And we got our spacing band. All right, I need a tack, Mr. Welder. No yeah. ground. I thought you were ready. I thought I was too. I do it all the time. I'm used to Jose doing it. I'll forget it. All right. All right. He's got his tack in it. Now you're going to put one on the bottom if you like that. I don't know. It's pretty good to me. You good? All right, we got a tack in the top, we got a tack in the bottom. Now, when you look down the pipe, this side is a lot tighter than this side. So, we'll grab our mini wedge. And if you try to put it in right here, it might be too tight. It's easier to come up here next to this, right after that tack where it's a little more open. All right, now both sides are even. And just heads up, if you'll look right where you're hitting every time and not try to look at something while you're trying, you won't hit your hand. So look right where you're going to hit, and you'll hit there every time. Anytime I tried something different, I hit my hand. Oh, right, well, we're going to grind that tack. <laughs> you got a taper tack here, taper tack here. Now, come here, I want to show you something. And you too. All right, so he's got his tacks tapered, but you see, you see how you grinded past that, right? Now, that's thin. Only grind that tack. That's all you want to grind. There shouldn't be no grinding up here, because now when you start off here, that hole is going to get big quick. And the same thing on the bottom. So guys, remember that. Just grind that tack right there. That's all you should grind. None of this here. All right, let's weld this side first. As soon as that wedge falls out, if it falls out when you're down here, it's no big deal. If it falls out when you're about right here, go ahead and weld that other side. Okay. So you've got your keyhole coming down and you're about to get into this one. That's your bottom tack. If you don't hold it in that bottom and, and kind of push on it and soak it in, there'll be suck back. What I want you to do is run up to that keyhole, push, kind of finesse it. And if, it, if you're having trouble closing up, just keep on coming 
and then you can run through it again. Get out of it. Pretty good. I think it's in there. All right. Now, a few things we can take away from the bead here is it's pretty heavy, right? It's a good looking bead. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's pretty heavy. But he was going pretty slow. I'm going to put this other side in. Oh, real quick. This company sent me this lens. Two food? It's in the description below. I've used it for about three months. And it's awesome. If I was to buy another one, I'd buy that one again. You know, it's one of those kind of things. When you find something that works, stick with it. So check them out. Let me know how you like them. I've been very impressed. All right, now on something like this, I think I can make it one rod, so I'm gonna go ahead and change, but I'm gonna save this rod. I'm not gonna be throwing it away. Got another rod in your pocket. All right. What's going on is I'm fighting it a little bit and it's not bad from around here. See how big that keyhole's getting? That keyhole's getting big and I can soak it in. I can keep going. I can keep going and soak it in and fight it. Or I can say, hey, turn me down. That's, that's just, you know, if you're not close to your remote, just go ahead and do it. But take a second. Make it right, turn it down. So that was just right for one rod. And I didn't have to change rods halfway down. And you'll see how that bead stands up a little bit higher. And it didn't take as much metal to weld it up. Does that make sense? So you're able to turn it down, move faster, and, and put a little cleaner bead in. So if you're running too hot and it's really blowing it out, turn it down a little bit. So. Hope you guys learned something from that. We're going to grind this and put a hot pass on it. Uh, you got something going on over here. So, if that happens, let's look at the bead on the inside. Can you see it? Does it look good or you see light through it? I see light through it. Okay. Now we're going to take our old rod. And we're going to push back through that. We're not going to try to grind it real thin. We're just going to just run back over it, let it open up and do its thing. But I'm going to let you do it. That's your side of the pipe, man. Yeah, you want to start up here and start pushing. And when you get into it, just run it like normal. And then when you get down to that bottom, start easing up on your pushing. Because you're already into it, you know. If it opens up and it starts welding, you know, kind of like you're putting the bead in it. Just run it like normal. When you get closer to the bottom here, uh, just kind of ease up and let it close up. All right, found a few weak spots. Now it's in there. That kind of stuff happens, man. Now we're going to grind that back out. 
and put a hot pass in. All right, guys, so as he was grinding into it, he noticed where he pulled out, it looks like he just pulled straight out instead of kind of easing up and kind of letting it just kind of fizzle out. So now we're going to grind into that dimple, but we're not going to put a bead in it. We're not going to put a 6010 back on it. We're going to just run the hot pass over it and it'll push that in there. You can see it looks like a wormhole in there. See that wormhole? We want to get all the way down into that. Now, whoa. I don't want you to grind everything, just that wormhole, because now you're going to blow back through. So anytime you're fixing a little spot, just get down to it. Now you're down to it, but I don't want you to blow out up here or down there. So the point was just to grind that hole. Right. But now we're probably kind of saying it's not turning blue yet, so maybe it'll be all right. And don't worry about those wagon tracks, stuff like that. And even that, you can see, you can see it's, you can see it's not that deep. You'll burn that out of there, no problem. As long as you're burning hot enough. Get it working. That's where you got it thin, right in there. Good, it got past the hard part. See how it got so hot that I was about to blow out and it didn't? All right, we got the hot pass brushed off. There's nothing wrong with that. When we got down to the bottom, we did good as well. It's a good looking hot pass. All right, guys, Austin has got his filler in. It looks like it's gonna be his first filler. Is it kinda in that middle zone where it's not quite enough. You just want it barely almost flush and just put a little makeup on it. You need a little bit there it looks like. And I think you're going to do a two bead cap, is that right? Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to let you do your thing, but if it was me, I would put a, just a little bit in there if you can. Because that's pretty good right here. And it looks pretty low. I don't know, man. You're in the middle. If you're going to do a two-bead cap, you can you can fight a lot with a two-bead cap. So do that. I'll be back. Okay. So Austin's about to put a cap on this pipe. And he was asking me, how hot should I be? Where should I be at? It's all good questions. If you're putting a two bead cap, or just a cap in general, usually, if you put the bead in with a 6010, where you cap's gonna be a pretty close to where you put the bead in if you're using a 532. So beads with a 1 8 we're filling and capping with a 532. I'm gonna put the heat exactly where we put the bead on, and we're gonna see how that works out. Now, when you go to cap it, you're gonna, Scratch off about right here, and you're going to run up here, and you're going to start your, your nice little puddle. Don't pile it up where it's a big old mound. Just start your puddle, get it going, and then you're coming down like this. We're not stepping it. We're not whipping it, doing all that stuff. We're just kind of stepping and moving. Kind of drag it forward and push it back. You'll see those nice little pretty ripples. 
Now you're gonna do that all the way till you get right here on Dead Man's Curve, they call it. And you might have to move just a little bit faster, just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. Do not let that slag get in front of you. If it starts piling up below you, you might have to move a little bit, do something. Just remember, do something to get in front of it. it might be different for you. So start off and and just, just keep it behind you. Keep it behind you. And then when you get on the bottom, you're going to start getting longer, longer steps. So I hope that helps you guys. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to come back and check on you. All right, guys, Austin just got done with his two bead cap, and I will say it looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to mark it up, and we're going to talk about all the things that could get, be better, you know, that we can work on. First thing, as soon as you walk up, get a little bit closer so we can see, is this arc burn right here. That's a big no-no, but it's not very deep, and you could probably scratch that out with a file, all right? Not recommending that. Just try not to make arc burns on the pot. The next thing is this right here. Looks like you slipped a little bit and came over and kind of did something funny. But that's okay because you can hit that with a file. Now as you move down here, we got some loose wrinkles. That's not a big deal. It's above flush. Um, you know, that happens. But I noticed this. you might have had to start getting back in front of your puddle or was that a restart i think i was just trying to get back in front of me. okay sometimes that slag will try to get in front of you and you try to come back and get it and give you a loose wrinkle we're looking good all the way down here now on the bottom still looking good there's a little bit of undercut right here and we really need to get a file knock that back but the, one of the bigger things is it's hard to get the I'm gonna flip this pipe over. Everybody wants to look at the top. Nobody wants to look at the bottom. But that is uh, normal. That's part of it, guys. If that's happening to you, if, if you're leaving that big divot, it look, it's no big deal. You can come back and put a little makeup on it. If this was me, you left off right on the bottom. If this is me, I'd ran that bead all the way over here, you know, and then when you come back around the other side, I would have overlapped it and come out over here. And when you're coming out, I'm going to come down here like I'm on the bottom. When you're coming across the bottom, you're stepping it, you're stepping it, you're stepping it. And then when you get right down dead on the bottom, you want to step, 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 and you kind of step out of it. Does that make sense? So you saw the the divot on the bottom and that's from it's all hot down there it's it's strange how hot it gets on the bottom the gravity's fighting you and if you don't try to step out of it you're right on the bottom you got to kind of step 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 even you know even if it makes your weld look a little bit funny those little steps because it'll, it'll kind of leave it uh, a lot more flat than just pulling straight off on the bottom that's what happened to you here you were you it looks like you stopped on the button on both sides so we'll work on that but man i'm telling you you're coming along and i know a lot of you guys are too if you have any questions leave them in the comments i'm going to try to start doing some more but welding videos have been very busy uh, growing a different business i haven't been doing any welding myself but now i've got austin here and if i have somebody to help uh it really makes gives you some you know gives you reason to crank up the welding machine and make a welding video so Guys, as always, if you think I haven't done a good job, <laughs> write it down, uh, uh, roll it up, and stick it, all right? <laughs> I hope you've got something out of this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I think you did a pretty good job. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Have an awesome, awesome day. Later.